Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play Eador, Masters of the Broken World with No Fair Fight. We are exploring the province of Stone Falls because we're a little bit low on health, but actually we should uh, go back. I talked a lot about basic units last time and today I want to talk about spells. We build a library that gives us access to f zero level spells. What does that mean? Well, zero level spells are not connected to any of the schools, Necromancy, Chaos, Winds, Sorcery, Wizardry or Sanctuary. Therefore, they do not cost any gems to cast. They just cause, cost stamina. The first is the Magic Spark, which is an attack spell that does very little damage and if the enemy has any magic resistance like this, it will do even less. Then there is Fatigue, which is a very effective spell, because this spell reduces the enemy's stamina consist considerably. If you cast that on a high level unit, for example, like an Executioner, that is a human unit that has a round attack and is quite powerful, four times that spell and that Executioner is no longer executing anyone, he's just a statue on the battlefield waiting to be killed. Then there is Inspiration. Inspiration gives you two stamina and costs one, so why cast that spell? Well, quite simple, it has to do with morale. Basically, morale, when you lose it, your guys fight worse and tr even try to run away, and if it gets higher you do no more damage. So that is one effect of Inspiration. But actually, there are some units that can reduce your morale so far that your enemies run away, and then they will keep a low moral for a very long time because you're only getting better at moral over the time again. Every unit has a basic moral. For example, if it's 10 and you have 19 morale, each turn where you not, do not fight and not gain morale, it will be deducted by 1 until it reaches 10 and then it rests there. The other way around, if you have 1 morale, it will take 9 turns to get to 10 again. So 9 turns you should better not fight. With inspiration, you can cast that spell two times and voila, your unit is bat in bat back in battle. So remember that if you come across anyone who casts terror and you do not know how to get your unit fighting again, inspiration will be the choice. We will need repairs because our gear is in terrible condition. So, buckle up. We are at the moment not very healthy so we will rest. Search through the province, an ancient crypt but too strong defended. One more time. Uh, a mage tower. Now mages are very special targets. First of all, they're summon and sorcerers. Shamans mainly do their magic missile. Sorcerers do magic missile and a spell like vulnerability which lowers your defenses, resistances and your range defense. And they have a more powerful magic missile, commonly. They have a range of 4, so if you're a uh, scout, you can simply shoot them to bits before they come close enough. If you are a mage, you normally have the resistance to endure the spells and to survive. If you are a warrior, stay the hell away from those guys. You can talk to them and get a quest. Only problem is, normally it's bad for karma and it's a very hard quest, so we don't do that. But we're healed now, so I say. We go off to Mocky Box and, well kill someone. So, four. It will be two brigands, one thief and one bowman. We attack and hopefully our fatigue spell will help us a little. We can see where the enemy is deployed, so we can decide where we deploy ourselves. The enemy has a range of six he's, as he's on a hill. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he will actually be able to hit our crossbowmen, which we don't want to happen. So what do we do? Quite as simple. We stay with our warrior in the trees. Normally he has a defense of three. With this he has a defense of five. So the crossbowmen will not do much. And then we simply wait it out. We could place our slinger here, but what for? If he's on the hill, he has the same range comparatively if, you, if we would put him in the hill and we might have some space to maneuver. So we better let him stay the right there where he is. So we start the battle. He shoots at us. 
He does no damage, how should he? And we will lower the enemy's Sturm Stamina. Now this is getting more interesting because, see that? He's trying to get closer. The enemy is already losing Stamina again. We could now cast a Stamina loss on him. That will cost him 4 Stamina, then he has 6. Which means he will still be able to do considerable damage. So we better keep weakening this guy. A good shot, one must say. Well, let's try to rob him of his life. If we move down from the hill, we will not be able to do a lot of damage because uh, we still have the same range, so we stay where we are with our halfling. But we take this guy's stamina. Ouch! So... Before anything goes wrong, he still does 3 damage, so he will not be able to kill us. But we can take this guy down before he can do any real stuff. And we can cast one more time Fatigue, and this time against that thing. We're alive, that's all we ask for. We are wounded, so he does 2 to 5 damage. Well, he does 2 to 5, that does not make a lot of difference. But we must take uh, this guy down. So, we will. So, what we do now is we rest. Why do we rest? Because the battle will get intense now. We get out of the way. Um, we have a stamina of 9, so we better do... Can we cast one more fatigue? No, we cannot. But you can see we, we have effectively um, made these two guys here a lot less effective. And we will try to keep our distance. So, what we need is, need is time to fight this guy. We have no more ammunition, so fighting this guy will be hard. He has a attack of 9, a counter attack of 6, so attacking him on one hand might be useful, because if we attack him first, he will be damaged and so he will not be that effective when he attacks. But on the other hand though, it will cost us 2 stamina, and then we will be left with two, uh, with 3 stamina, which will significantly decrease our attack power. So, actually, I will rest. So, he attacks for 4. We counter-attack. We cannot shoot him. So we better stay where we are, because if he moves and attacks, he's costs him more stamina than when he just attacks. And with this low stamina, he's not doing a lot of damage, so we will just stay where we are. He will move there, as you've seen, he will do very little damage, and he will use up the little stamina that he has. We, on the other hand, are fully operational. Um, life points, because we need to stay alive. And I think it's time to go... Oh. We should invest a little bit, because this region here is overpopulated, which means um, the village cannot grow, because there is no room to expand. We have to look around a bit, just to find room for them to settle. When the, house, when the little house is gone, it's good, then we can go back. Okay. The local healer the province of Stanpos had opened up an infirmary. Now diseases will no longer plague these lands. Well, we could give him something, or we can take money for it. Um, but we will do neither, because we don't have any money to spare, and I don't want to have any bad feelings with this guy. But when you look at it, now there... Now, where is it? Now here's an infirmary. 
Hooray! Units are healed faster and the population growth increases. So that's quite nice. We're pretty, pretty close to next level. So we will just explore the province and hope for a level up. And there is an encounter! Adventurers! Well, of course we approach them. We could fight them, but there are elves with them. One elf, one dwarf, one halfling. What is, what is an elf? An elf is the best level 1 unit you will ever encounter. Those guys shoot better than bowmen, farther than bowmen, and are able to take more damage than bowmen. They have better defenses and they have better close combat abilities. They can learn double shot, they can learn fire arrow, and they have a natural ammo, penetra ammo penetration. Elves can only be obtained either by mercenaries or by an alliance with the elves, which is quite hard to get. Elves are even useful in later levels. That means even if you have a level 30 hero and you have high level units with you, what do you do with your first level slots of your army? You could put pale place healers there, but the most effective thing to do is to place a, uh, either crossbowmen there or elves, because your level 1 close combat units, even barbarians, will not survive against big targets. But the elves will do the damage. No matter what they attack, even if it's higher level, the elves will do the damage. Dwarves, little funny guys, as long as they're on hills they get a special defense bonus, which is quite good, but besides that they're su just slow targets. Halflings, well it's more or less a slinger on combat trucks. Those guys are effective, not effective all but as elves, but quite good, and they're not that costly. We will talk to them, we'll not attack them, we'll talk to them, and we'll remind them of the law, that half of the loot goes to the lord. Yes, we can try to force them to give us everything, but that will be bloody. So, we take what they have, and they give us an armor. Uh, we have money, we have crystals, and we have an armor. Look at this, it's even a set armor. Plus five defense, plus five range defense, plus two morale. Yes, we'll lose a little bit of attack and we lose speed, but that's all worth it. Look at this armor. That's good. That's really, really impressively good. So we equip the armor immediately and we keep the armor we have because um, this armor can go down. It, the durability reaches zero. It will offer no protection whatsoever. And at this time, <laughs> it would be best to um, have an armor to spare bef until we get back to a place where we can repair them. We have a range defense of 6 now. Actually, we don't need that much. Actually, we can go for... No, no, no. We sp don't waste the money. Don't waste the money. But normally, range defense 5 is more than enough against most low-level targets. What we want now to build is an altar. Why? Because an altar will give us access to the building where the healers can be built. Hooray! This guy's here and they're wonderful. They're just what we need as a warrior. We'll keep exploring one more time. And then we'll buy a healer and start killing people. A cage! And we even get a level up. We can get more attack. We can get the ability that we get special income from our hero and that our items are not destroyed that fast, or we get a special attack and defense bonus. As we have a wonderful army, we need the attack bonus. We get arrows, which would be nice if we were arrow users, and we get a spell that is quite not that useful, sadly. But okay. So... The Brotherhood of Light. Be reminded that you can only build four of these buildings. So only build those that you need and later on when you have the higher level bu unit buildings remember that some of the higher level buildings require low level buildings to be built so plan ahead what you build you can never go wrong with crossbow mess and brotherhood of light in my eyes because a healer and a crossbow man is every all times wonderful to have and they give good karma this guy can now be thrown away and you see we get a moral bonus bonus because this guy is good, this guy is unlawful, they love each other, they're great, they're perfect. Everything's good. So, we have repaired. We have items that we don't need, so we might place the arrows here, because someday we will get an, um, 
ranged hero. And the dispel, well, we keep it, but we don't need it at the moment. So I say it's time to fight a little bit more. And for that, we'll need different spells. Because I'm up and running to take down skeletons now. And in order to do that, we'll need different spells. Well, actually, we need something else. This one here. So, we will attack the ghost town. Hooray! Four skeletons and zombies, so two of each, I assume. And, yep, I'm right. The healer, of course, goes back, and here we are, ready to get killing. So this guy will immediately go here. Uh, we can already try to damage him a little so that killing him will get easier. And then we just wait. Of course he will go down here and try to close in. Um, we will take a magic spark. How much damage do we do actually? 11. This guy has 11 life points. So in order to make a one-shot kill, we do this. Why is a one-shot kill so important against skeletons? Mainly against all undead. Because undead do not take um, a loss of combat abilities when they're wounded. They will always fight the same way they always do. And there is nothing you can do against that. Um, they will not be weakened. They will always stay with the same combat ability no matter what you do. Now we have to go here and attack him because if we don't he'll break through and really does do damage to us. So the only thing we can do is go here and snatch him. And trust in our armor, which is good. Our armor is good. In our armor we trust. So we kill this guy. We're now very, very low on uh, stamina, but we will, st we will, we will endure simply because of the fact that we will do inspiration. Uh, Twenty-seven morale. We still have considerable uh, fighting powers, simply due to the fact that. Um, we have such a high morale. 6-6 six, six with only one stamina is incredible. And it's more than enough to take these guys down. Uh, we take, of course, the hit points. We take the ammo. And we find a tunic, which is a horrible armor. And we find a spell called Exorcism, which is good against undead and creatures like that, but against anything else is not very effective. But so it be. It, it might come in handy later on. We repair everything. Uh, we're a little bit wounded. Point taken. We put the stuff here. And I think it's time to build another building regarding spell casting to show you another spell that I like. And that is Burn Ammo. Now you ask Boris, what is Burn Ammo good for? Is that a good spell? Yes, it is. It is an incredibly good spell, as I will demonstrate you now. We take two times Burn Ammo. And we will take one time, well... Actually... Oh, it gives, it gives bad karma to cast that spell. I think that's the same with this one here. No, no does not. It is an evil spell, yes, and we got a little bit bad karma for building it, but it does not give permanently bad karma. So, we take this, and we take this, and so we will be able to deal with the most of the targets easily. We will now attack the goblins, just to show you more spell casting. Oh, we can do a dark ritual, which will 
uh, make our people unhappy and we receive gems. We have more than enough gems. There is no need to do that. So. Goblins. Goblin spitters and goblins. Why is that important? Because goblin spitters are ranged fighters. And they're actually quite good ranged fighters, sadly to say so. So. They have a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So they will have to move to attack us. But fear not, my friends, fear not. Because these guys have might have nine shots. But we have burn ammo. And as you can see, now he has three shots left. We're healing ourselves up. And we're starting to harass those guys. Yes, they're poisoning us, and yes, that's evil. But we can live with that. We heal ourselves up. We penetrate those guys badly. Um, this guy might now be a problem. One, two, three, four, five. That might, he's able to hit both of them. That's bad. So we should immediately something do something to burn up his ammo. Now he's two shots left and he's wounded. So I hope that is enough to cope with him. The main problem is the fact that um, he will be out of ammo after one shot so he's not the problem. We will move forward. We will heal ourselves up. We will now take permanent damage every time we move until the poison is done. Yeah, our armor is incredible. Yeah, they're just poisoning around. This guy has how many shots left? Zero. So I would say problem solved. And there he goes. And we will have more than enough time to heal ourselves up. hit them you will take that guy out problem solved we cannot heal anymore that's a problem point given but as you can see excellent work well the payment sucks as well but I think you get the point we heal ourselves up and I think I can show you now that exorcism spell thing. Notice the following. Uh, oh, we must have it into our, in our inventory. If we have a spell scroll in our inventory... Oh wait, it's a level 2 spell, I guess. Is it level 1 or level 2? Cyclic 2. Okay, we cannot learn it, otherwise we could put it down there. But we cannot because it's level 2 and we cannot yet cast level 2 spells. Sadly. But we have enough money to buy another spell school. So the other spell school that I like is this one here, the School of Sorcery. Because it gives you access to the web, which is a spell that can immobilize almost any target. It has the best spell of all, Astral Energy, which will not only give you resistance, which is perfect. It will also give you stamina. And it will give you a second turn. So that's all in one. And it stacks. That's unbelievable great, if you ask me. That's unbelievable great. The only problem here is that thanks to the armor, I, our guy is as slow as a Todois. But besides that, this guy is incredible. So what we will actually do is we'll buckle up this. Oh, I, I'm not sure if we have any mages here. Battle mages, yes. And so next time I'll show you how to fight battle mages. I hope. Well, thanks for watching. Bye!